Hey, True Believers, England Teen here with another episode of Marvel vs. DC Comics. Which comic books suck, and which comic books are good. Yep, this is a review show, and I have done, as you can see, all these comic book covers are passing by. These are the comic books that are being reviewed in this episode. And yes, I am finally caught up! Woohoo! <laughs> no, that's actually something serious for me. I've been really putting out these long ass Marvel vs. DC books or videos because uh, I've I've just been trying to get back. I've been like a week behind. So anyway, this time we're all caught up, and uh, it's very simple. If you've never seen one of these videos, it, I read and reviewed every comic book you're seeing pass by here, and I give a little review, forty seconds to a minute. And it's visceral. It's just, did you like it? Did you hate it? And why? This is not an in-depth video. This is not an in-depth review because that would be three, four, five hours long. So the well, actually, people who are like, well, actually, you should be looking into El oh, Hush. That's not what this one's about. <laughs> this is just to tell you, are the books worth it or not? Anyway, uh, or in my opinion, of course. And it is my opinion. By all means, let me know your opinion in the comments below. Did I get something right? Did I get something wrong? It's all good. Anyway, I rank them. One star is horrible. Two star is bad. Three star is average. Four star is good. And five star is excellent. And then at the end of the video, we're going to tally up the scores and see who wins the week because it's fun. It's just fun to see. Is it Marvel who wins? Is it DC who wins? I'm a DC fan, but still... I review all comics with an open mind. I take this that serious. Anyway, it looks like we're getting to the end of the list here. We've only got a couple of more covers. So by all means, ladies and gentlemen, kick back, relax, and enjoy. The one-star books are horrible and should be avoided at all cost. <laughs> Female Furies number four. We get the story of... Barda and Mr. Miracle, a little bit of how they met as kids and how they were raised. This is an embarrassment. The whole series is an embarrassment to the point where if this was released under my watch, I would not only be embarrassed, but it would be a job requirement for everyone at the company to be embarrassed for this as well. There's nothing good coming from this book or series. The two star books, they're bad. They could have been horrible, but thankfully they had just a little something to save them. Captain Marvel number five. You know what? I found something out. I, I, I do have a little bit of prejudice. And I, I figured it is I cannot take anything serious that has that one head si shaved, hair flipped over to the other side haircut. Every time I see it, I just go, blech. I don't even want to look at it. It's just so freaking stupid. It's not a good look for anybody. Uh, the story itself, is the art is not all that great, and the story is worse. The writing is horrible in it. And since when can Captain Marvel control Rogue whenever Rogue absorbs her powers? Green Lantern number seven, I have to say Grant Morrison is hit and miss with me. Sometimes he's brilliant, and sometimes he fails dramatically. But you got to give it to the man. He swings for the fences, and he does that right here. I mean, you got Hal Jordan inside of his own ring. This is mostly a text comic. The art is incredible. I got to give it to that. It's just, uh, it drags. The comic really does drag a, a lot. And in the end, I found myself, really, do I, I just don't care. And unfortunately, that's a big problem. Hats off to those of you who like it, but for me, this just doesn't make the cut. War of the Realms, Journey into Mystery number two. Now, if you remember the last one, I did not care for Journey into the Mystery as far as War of the Realms is concerned. Uh, this isn't getting any better. This is a slice of life comic book in the middle of this, what's supposed to be the grand summer crossover. It has nothing to do with anything. Thankfully, though, they make up for that by having the art be bad. Seriously, if there is one, if you're like, oh, well, I can only skip one comic in this whole series, this is it. It is useless. Young Justice, number six. Wow, it's six issues in. Isn't this time to close up the trade paperback? I'm actually surprised that they're continuing with the Gem World storyline. It's okay. There's nothing great about this book. It's... Almost like they are really riding on the goodwill of the comic 
but they don't really know. I'm not. I don't mean comic. I mean the cartoon. But they don't really know how to translate that goodwill into what's going on in the comic book. Good to see Tim Drake back, but it really does seem like he's acting out of character as well. Overall, I'm not impressed with this book at all. War of the Realms Strike Force: The Dark Elf Realm. In all honesty, I'm not going to kid you with this. This is a complete... I read this and I was like, it's okay. It is absolutely 100% it's okay. Except one thing. In the middle, Freya goes, Hey, you should fight me so I could test you. There's no need. There's nothing in it that adds anything to any character. It's filler. It's just time-consuming pap. It is absolutely nothing. This is the most useless comic attached to War of Realms. War of Realms, number three, Wow, so War of Realms is something that Marvel's doing, and they seem to be having a lot of fun, but they don't really... This book does not seem as if the creators want you to have a good time so long as they're enjoying making it. Uh, the art is horrible, by the way. You would think for their big summer push that the art would be better than this. The story is completely uneven. There are times when I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And then there's times when I'm just, oh, that sucks. Get on with it. Come on. What you doing? And I, that's uh, uh, as much a critique about the entire series as it is this issue. But this is just one issue doing the same exact thing that the last two have. Uncanny X-Men number 17. So I did a full review of this. Check it out. I was calling out the fact that they used and r ruined Wolvesbane as a character so they could tell a stupid toxic masculinity story, which is pretty bad because... The character that they used to show off this toxic masculinity could have been a full-fledged character that had depth, but they chose to go mustache-twirling villain on him, and it just doesn't work in no way, shape, or form. Wonder Woman number 70. Now, I've actually been enjoying this storyline, uh, and I do like the fact that Aphrodite gave birth to lust and desire and all that, and she, made, she said to a neighbor, hey, follow your heart, and... Uh, th so this is the crisis, right? This issue right here comes off very much like the uh, the architect talking to to, Ma to Matrix to Neo, and it just doesn't work. It's like all the way up to this point, it was decent, and then this issue stops it dead. Looks like the story is going to pick up again next issue. Hopefully, it will get better. This one issue, though, I cannot recommend. Savage Avengers, number one. So there's something I used to say because I saw enough movies do this. If you put all your favorite comedians into a comedy movie, it's going to be unfunny. And here you have Savage Avengers with all the baddest ass Marvel characters. And guess what? This is lame. It really is. You got Conan and Wolverine ha hacking at each other a couple of times and it's just oh my gosh been there done that and can we put conan back where he belongs please it's okay to see him once in a while with the modern day heroes but otherwise it just isn't right not in my opinion this storyline and well okay first i guess i should announce star wars number 65 this storyline has been hit and miss all throughout and it's been going on for far too long I'm very happy to see that it's finally getting to a head because it the first half of this book was just exposition and finally it got down to business and became interesting as soon as Leia and Han shows up and the action begins. Otherwise, it really, it, it's just, I guess what I'm saying is the pacing is really poor on this book. I wish I could say better because usually I'm praising Star Wars comics. Captain America number 10. Now, granted, I haven't read a lot of Captain America in the last couple of months, so he's in prison. All right. He's becoming friends with the bad guys he put there. He's Captain America. I guess he could be forgiven. But one of the big problems with this story, and I wanted to get around it because I did enjoy a lot of this, is the fact that a lot of times people tell a story where you see that Steve Rogers is not just the super soldier formula. 
and there's some sort of power dampener around him or keeping him from using his strength and so forth and so on. And he gets his ass whipped left and right, and it doesn't even do it in such a way where you're feeling every punch, but he won't give up. The words say he's not going to give up, but the art doesn't give us that kind of feeling. And then, of course, the power comes on. It's like, yes, I have the victory, and he punches Baron Strucker through the bars. Basically, the message of the book ends up being Steve Rogers ain't sh- without the super soldier serum, which just kind of mows over everything we've learned about him in the last, what has it been, almost like 80 years now? Damn. Catwoman number 11 is a mess of a book if you look. Like, if you read it through, it kind of comes off as, it's decent, it's cool, it's a chase scene. But it really has, one, nothing to do with the cover here. Two, there's a scene where cops open up at Catwoman when she's in a tipped-over armored car that is... The cops are basically facing also this big gala that's going on. And if they were firing Catwoman and missing, that means they're hitting people that were lined up in the streets. It's ridiculous. Um, and, and, And that's the big problem with it. Just doesn't seem like a lot of thought went into this issue. Champions number five. So Kamala Khan's having a little bit of a trouble because it seems like her team's falling apart. Some have left. Viv and Riri Williams are having a hard time because Viv fell in love with her. And during a battle, Cyclops steps up, says, wait a second, the champions. And then all of a sudden he starts leading them. Not like real leadership, just tells them vague things. Hit them hard, champions, you know, that kind of stuff. It's a decent story. And I do like the fact that they gave Cyclops a good moment. I'm a fan of his and he gets very few and far between. Overall, yeah, it's average. Justice League number 23. Man, it's kind of weird to see the Justice League turn tail and run, which you're going to see the panel in just a little bit. Overall, I thought this was a very average kind of book. It's trying to set things up, and it becomes a little bit wordy in its exposition. Like, it could have told the same story in less pages. I It's not horrible, it's just I've seen Justice League done better and I've seen this story be more exciting. Batman number 70 has Batman supposedly waking up, but then he goes throughout Arkham beating up basically his most famous villains. And it always weirds me out on these issues just for the fact that he, in one panel, kicks the crap out of a villain that would normally take an entire book or maybe even an entire trade paperback worth of books. So I wonder, you know, how awoke he actually is, how waking up, I guess. And after he fights through, he goes home and says, I'll be back, Bane. I'm coming to kick your butt. Um, I'm glad he's awake because this story got boring really quick. But overall, this is at least a decent issue. Alrighty, amazing. What is this? Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number six. And I saw Spider-Bite. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, no. No, 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 no. And then I saw what they were really doing. I was like, okay, it's all right. It's all right. And then I saw what they were really doing. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. And that's my uh, experience with this. I don't want to go too much into it, but they're trying to copy one of the most famous single-issue Spider-Man stories of all time, and I think they land flat in the middle. It's not a complete fail. It just isn't a complete success either. Star Wars Age of Rebellion Boba Fett number one and you know I've said it every freaking week about that number one BS you're on like issue 40 already guys just say issue 40 Jesus Lord in heaven anyway this has Boba Fett going after another bounty hunter who had uh, had poached somebody else's bounty and they do the whole strong silent type with Boba Fett here I guess it works a little bit overall this is one of the weaker issues uh, of this series it's still enjoyable but ultimately it's kind of forgettable Justice League Odyssey number nine so here we have an existential crisis within the team as they start to realize that maybe just maybe Dark Side is right especially when they see Uh, Azrael really shine in his uh, religious leader role and they start to wonder well should they follow Darkseid's plan considering you know he's Darkseid 
And it makes for a very interesting book. Not a particularly exciting one, but it's definitely a decent character study. The Batman Who Laughs, number five. Um, let me go off on a tangent a little bit. Now, I read The Batman Who Laughs, and I enjoy it, but I don't love it, and I'm wondering why. I mean, it, it's got a lot of cool elements to it, and it finally hit me this time around. I mean, it, it's been crawling inside my brain, but I realize they want you to think Batman's smart, and they have him doing some decent decisions sometimes, but for the most part, they've dumbed down Batman to make the, jo the Batman Who Laughs look better. And that's just not the way to go about it. If you want a really good book, you have to have the hero and the villain both competent. You know, the Joker laughs isn't great because Batman is is the best in this particular instance. It's still decent. And it's a fun read. It just could be better. The Flash, number 70. His origin starts here. We've never seen this before, have we? Uh, it's Flash Year One is what they're calling it, and yeah, it's his origin story again. I don't know what to say, guys. I've seen it. I've been there. I've done that. This really has not added anything different to it. I guess if this is your first time around, you're going to like it a lot more. There are and There is a couple of interesting twists. But once again, if you've seen it before, you're not going to get anything new. The writing isn't so great as to make you forget the other times you've read this story. The four-star books are legitimately good, and I am proud to recommend them to you. War of Realms, New Agents of Atlas, number one. I have to admit, I liked it better than what I thought I was going to. Uh, it's Champions. Okay, so if you like champions or you hate champions, probably you're going to have that same reaction here. There are some interesting new characters. They go to Korea. I particularly liked a uh, K-pop star turned superhero. The art's pretty decent. I'm not saying this is an amazing book. I am saying this is an enjoyable book. It's, it's okay. As far as the War of Realms con is concerned, though, it's like leaps and bounds above some and not quite as good as others. Star Wars Age of Rebellion, Han Solo. In this issue, you have Han vehemently denying that he's part of the Rebellion, all the while finding himself doing one favor after another for people in the Rebellion and the Rebellion itself. It's actually, it's a pretty decent story. I've been enjoying these Age of books, although, like I said, let's just stop with the number ones. That's my only gripe with them, because otherwise, yeah, they tend to capture the spirit of the old Star Wars movies and are kind of a lot of fun. The Adventures of the Super Sons, number 10, has been a great series, but since there's only a couple of issues left, technically I cannot recommend this. It's not a great jump on point. That being said, the book itself is so much fun. And if you've been following the series, you're not going to be disappointed by this issue either. It is incredible. I mean, you know, you see him riding in on their uh, on their steam engine that was provided by Robot Jonah Hex. Who that those words right there should send you away, but it doesn't. It all works. It's just what we like about comic books. Symbiote Spider-Man number two. Yeah, they're bringing out Mysterio and Spider-Man. For the far from home, <laughs> you know it is. It's all marketing. Anyway, I I hear a lot about people talking. Is it? Oh, we got to bring comic books back to the '90s and the '80s and all that kind of crap. And uh, it seems like a lot of them are have learned the wrong lessons from the '80s and '90s. And it's like kind of like the '90s themselves. Ooh, people like dark heroes. Let's make them more violent and stupid. Ha ha ha. Um, and that seems to be the lesson. This here feels and looks like a 1980s comic book, and it's enjoyable. It's a lot of fun. It's not great. I'm not saying it's as good as Hawkman or anything like that. But if you spend your money, I think you're going to have a good time with it. Marvel Team Up, starring Spider-Man and Ms. Marvel. So I thought this would be a book where we're going to get to know a whole bunch of different superheroes. Ms. Marvel is supposedly the star of this one. I guess they're doing it the trade paperback way. Let's tell six issue stories. This one is fun. I've got to admit it is kind of freaky Friday and they go more with that than a superheroic book, but overall it works and it's fun. 
Batman Ninja Turtles 3, number one. I've been an advocate for these books. All both, both the other series were great, and I highly recommend this one as well. The art is awesome, and this is kind of like them being in an Elseworlds world. And some of the things you're watching, like at first I was like, wait, what, what the hell's going on? This doesn't make sense. Why is that's the Joker? What's going on? And then it clicked, and it's like, oh, dude. And there's a good uh, cliffhanger as well. I'm telling you, this is a book to buy. You're going to enjoy it. Detective Comics 1003 is just a lot of fun. And I got to say, I was never really a fan of Damian Wayne, but recently, Super Sons, what's been going on in Teen Titans, and now this, the way he stands off against the Arkham Knight in this particular issue really makes him a decent character, and that is the meat and potatoes of this issue. That To me, anyway, it's the heart and soul. It's what really kind of carries it through, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Shazam number five. The kids are still stuck in fa- Funland. Some in Gameland, some actually facing off the uh, main character, at least uh, Billy and Mary. I like the series. It really is fun. You know, I mean, I know they're in Funland and everything, but it is. It captures the uh, the right spirit. I would like to see a more wise Shazam. That seems to be the weakness of almost every Shazam writer. But otherwise, a very entertaining book. Conan number six. So in this one, we see it's the basic story of he join he joins an army only to find out that all the people in the army that he joins doesn't know what to do. So he's got to step up and be a leader. It's it's actually, I kind of scoff at the story because, you know, been there, done that. That being said, it's still done pretty well. And I've always believed it's not what the story is about it, it, more than how it's about it. It's a bloody good time, and I mean that literally. I mean, he's sitting on a pile of dead bodies. So far, so good for the Conan series. That's all I got to say. The Invaders, number five. So while Marvel said, hey, I've got this great idea for a big summer crossover, and they do War of Realms, which has been spotty at best, they've got the Invaders over here where it's Namor attacking the surface. I understand that's been there, done that. Atlantis attacks in the 90s was the best example of it. Um, But still, this seems more epic than War of Realms right now. It's one of the best books Marvel's been producing. It talks about not only modern day, but World War II days as well of the invaders. And it's absolutely worth the price of admission. All heck kind of breaks loose here in Supergirl number 30 as she figures out that uh, old Brainiac there is not exactly or did not begin on her team. Also, it seems to be that the axe she's been carrying around, if she holds it in power, I guess, long enough, it makes her more aggressive, and we find that out as well. Supergirl has just been a a lot of fun to read, and this entire storyline about her trying to find the murderers of Krypton has been tons better than the actual Superman story. We're going to get Superman and Jonathan Kent in the next issue, and I'm interested in that particular storyline just to see if they're played off better than they are in the Brian Michael Bendis books. Definitely a a good book to pick up. Amazing Spider-Man number 20. So it continues the hunted storyline. So far, so good. We find the vultures kind of being duped. And it, it brought to me a little bit of a question. When did Kraven the Hunter become the be-all, end-all of Spider-Man bi- villains? Now, granted, I do like the fact that they made him smarter, they made him a better hunter, or so forth and so on, kind of like the Batman of uh, Spider-Man Badmans. So I-, I kind of enjoy that, but yeah, it's like the Vulture said, we were in the same team. What's going on here? It's good, but those questions have to be answered. Batman and the Outsiders, number one. Wow, I haven't been here in a long time, but I'm glad to see Black Lightning and Katana still on the team. Now if we can get rid of that signal guy and bring back Halo, we have something. Geoforce all the way. Anyway, actually, this is a good story. It, It really was strong. We get an idea of the relationships, although for some reason Black Lightning is really standoffish against Batman. I'm liking the dynamic, though. 
because it really does look like the writer is going to let the other heroes other than Batman shine. So yeah, pick this up if you can. Deathstroke number 43, continuing the Terminus storyline. I kind of dug this because it's basically a one damn thing after the other, and it's kind of fun to watch stuff fall apart around Damien and his refusal to have any of the help that he absolutely needs and still just, uh, yeah, I I dug it. It's a lot of fun. This whole storyline actually has been all because I've found the prison idea a little bit ridiculous, but now watching it come apart, that's that's the enjoyable part of it. Yeah. Check it out. Savage Sword of Conan number five. As it says on the cover, this is the showdown with Koga Thun. There is a definite ending, and considering there's going to be a Conan number six, I don't want to spoil it for you, but um, there I, I do kind of like the uh, the ending. They do that very well, as, as a matter of fact. I, I just dig it, and I'm very happy that the blood and guts are not toned down in this book. He is a barbarian, and he should be a barbarian, and thankfully, they didn't SJW him up. If you haven't been reading Conan, both books are actually good. Deceased, number one. So I heard, hey, this isn't a zombie book. It's a zombie book. (laughs) It is. Uh, And it's thoroughly entertaining. This is the setup issue. This is how the zombie apocalypse starts. They're giving you an explanation, unlike George Romero. But um, when everything gets going, it gets going good. I have to admit that there is a couple of pages in the middle where it kind of dips, but overall it's a fun book. It obviously is meant to entertain. Don't take it too serious. Don't read too much into it. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy, and it is good. The Punisher, number 11. Holy Toledo. He's really the Punisher these days, isn't he? Check this storyline out. He's been taken by Baron Zemo, and... All hell has just broken loose, and he punishers all over the place. This is such a cool book. That's the best way to describe this. It is just an intensely cool book. In this case, it's one of those motorcycle chases where he's picking off people one by one as he goes up. It's almost like a video game that you're reading, but damn, it's an exciting book. You should be checking this one out, seriously. Hawkman number 12 is just a joy to read. It is a lot of fun. It's a big battle. We do get some uh, we, we get some cool Kryptonian Hawkman moments. If, this is just a title that you should be picking up. The, and I said in the top 10 comic books sold to readers this week that focuses on the Spider-Man Mysterio, that's the thumbnail, that this should be in the top 10 every week, and it really should. If you aren't picking up Hawkman, you should be. Issue number 12 is the ending of a great story, so issue number 13 should be a jump on point. Check it out. DC Year of the Villain, number one. So usually I will say that this is an average book because it's an anthology and some stories are good, some stories are bad. You mix them up and there you have the facts of life. This, on the other hand, everything is great. I loved every story in this book, and it got me jazzed for what's coming up. Seriously, when I was doing all the lead-up to War of the Realms, it was very underwhelming. Now, some of it's good, some of it's bad, but everything is good here. This year is DC's to lose, as far as summertime reading is concerned. What a great uh, introduction to all of this. Alrighty, gang, so those are the reviews. Let's tally up the scores and see who won. Is it Marvel or DC? Marvel had 0 1 stars, 5 2 stars, 6 3 stars, 9 4 stars, 0 5 stars. It had a score of 65 with 20 comic books and an average of 3.25. DC had 1 1 star, 3 2 stars, 6 3 stars, 9 4 stars, 1 5 star, a score of 66 with 20 comic books. The average was 3.30. So DC wins the week, but it wasn't a landslide. This was very close. There were some books that were horrible and some books that were really good as well. I think my excitement for the DC Year of Villains uh, just put it right over the top. And I'm hoping Marvel can counter that. I want something great from Marvel. Please, can we get something great from Marvel? 
Anyway, kids, those are the reviews. That was the countdown. What did you think? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? What was I so off on? What what was I on point on? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like the video, you know the drill. Click like, click share, subscribe if you haven't done it already, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. And if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to Patreon to Ko-Fi or we just opened up an Amazon store where, hey, you know what? There's all sorts of cool uh, geek stuff we're accumulating there. Go on over, buy something, and then you get something, we get something. You help out the channel, and life is a happy place. Life is a happy song. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.